Hello everyone, I'm Lizard and welcome to another build guide. Today I'm bringing you my first ever Blade Dancer. And you know, when you think about Blade Dancer, you might be like me. You know, I imagine a character that goes full block, full tank, has 4k HP and loves to get hit in order to get infinite damage, right? That's the rogue fantasy that everyone enjoys and loves. So without further ado, let's get into the build and let's see what have I done with this character. Let's do an echo, we're at 200 corruption. This is a weekend character that I played on the on the vision tournament. And uh, this one of the skills that uh, had to be used for the tournament was puncture. And that's why I'm utilizing it. You could change the puncture for something like sync strike. But basically, uh, we're using puncture in order to buff our umbra blades. You know, just like every, um, just like every um, blade dancer build. You know, you're gonna be shifting around. You're gonna be throwing your decoy. Gonna be going very fast, throwing your blades. The blades are gonna do a lot, a lot of damage, obviously. And uh, yeah, that's. I mean, just blade dancer gameplay. There's not much to it. Smoke bomb, etc. You can see, you just rush to the objectives. Place your uh, your acid flasks. Get a shit ton of bleed chance with the stacks of uh, Living Fury from Puncture. Every time you get hit, you're gonna be getting uh, Dash Routes will give you Glancing Blow and will give you multiplicative damage for your Umbra Blades. And you can see that we basically don't take any damage. Um, we can face Tangle. This can push to literally a thousand corruption. I pushed this in three, four days since I made the character. I pushed it to. Uh, 500 waves in the arena, uh, rank 1, it's, absolute, it's absolutely ridiculous, um, and if you're looking for a build that uh, is really really good early on, it's really easy to play, and it has the potential to get really really ridiculous in endgame, uh, well you're probably looking for the right build, again Blade Dancer is super overtuned, uh, super easy to play, gets a shit ton of stuff for free, and I'm gonna be going over the guide on why that's the case. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is why I have built the character the way I build it. Okay, the main reason I have built the character the way I build it, which is like a zero dodge, full glancing blow version of this character, full HP, is because of this note here in Umbra Blades. You can see this Edge of Obscurity for each stack of dash route we get eight percent multiplicative damage so you can see that right now our dps on umbra blitz is nothing impressive it's nothing good you know just enough to kill enemies nothing too crazy but what happens right what happens if we get right a lot of damage by getting hit intentionally right i said by lizard how are you gonna get how are you gonna get hit intentionally well, we are immortal, so we don't care. And I'm gonna go to a low level zone, just so we can grab a lot of enemies and you guys see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna grab as many enemies as possible. There's a lot of archers in this area. They just selected this for the sake of the showing off how this interaction works. Again, we're gonna grab as many archers as we can. We're gonna make them all aim at us, right? All of them. We gotta be careful because we're blocking acid flask. And now we're gonna get hit. You can see how my dash rods are just basically going up to infinity, pretty much. And uh, your damage, basically, as long as you're getting hit and you're getting stacks, uh, yeah, it's just gonna go, you know, you can reach 200 stacks easy. To I've seen 150 in arena, etc. And again, you're gonna be so tanky with, uh, with all the layers of defense that this character has that we will discuss on the planner. That is just ridiculous. This allows you to go full HP, completely ignore damage idols, and do do a lot of damage. I'm gonna showcase a bit the damage really fast for those who are curious. So normally you don't get that many dash routes, right? Uh, unless you are on combat. So you're gonna have to imagine kind of how how much damage you are able to get with this build. So you're gonna see that normally, you know, when we're when we're playing, you know, we can get some dash routes by using puncture. We get our bleed chance also while using puncture. That, those are the dash routes, and we also get some dash routes by using smoke bomb, right? We also want to be utilizing either Acid Flask or Shuriken. You can use whatever you want on your build to get the extra bleed chance, right? Like the extra 
a poison chance that we get for being on top of a, an acid flask and we're gonna you're gonna see or we're gonna get a lot of bleed chance thanks to a puncture and that gets converted to poison so we have around 800 percent poison chance at the moment right again we do the combo we get our stacks and then we drop our umbra blades and, and you can see the umbra blades you know it doesn't look like a lot you know you're gonna be hitting the dummy for like 200k or whatever that's with no dash routes now, if we're hitting the dummy for 100k with almost no dash routes, just imagine how much damage you're gonna be once you have 30, 100, 60. Uh, obviously, against bosses, it's not gonna be the best, but again, the damage is still really good, even if, if, even without it. You can see, I'm, I'll try to do a combo where I actually have a, f a few dash routes, and you can see the damage is still really good. You know, we hit the dummy for like 200k or whatever. You can reach 300k easy, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, but this allows you to basically get just enough damage to clear trash and clear bosses without the dash routes and actively scale your damage infinitely when the situation uh, is presented, you know, when you're actually just taking hits. And again, you know, it doesn't look like you have that much damage, but I did push 500 waves in like less than an hour and a half. So yeah, it's a lot of fucking damage and it's really tanky. Okay, let's go over the planner really quick, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I do. Let's go over the passives first. So the passives are pretty straightforward. Uh, we grab all the glancing blow. Why? Because we want to be, we want to have as much glancing blow as possible. With this particular build, once you have a couple dash routes, you're going to be capped on glancing blow, thanks to this passive here that converts your dodge to glancing blow. I say, Lizard, no dodge. The reason you don't want dodge is because if you're dodging you're not getting dash routes and then you don't get as much damage, right? So you intentionally want to be getting hit, right? You want to be uh, getting the, the uh, getting hit by trash, right? Imagine there's like a big guy, he's really tanky and there's a bunch of archers that are hitting you for 30 damage. Well, you just go into the big guy, let the archers hit you. You don't take any damage because of Bastion and all the damage reduction and suddenly you're, you know, instead of hitting for 100k, you're suddenly hitting for 2 million, you know, just because the, literally the trash is buffing you. So that is the reason why I opted to go without dodge. You can te you can definitely play this same build with dodge, but then I wouldn't uh, rely so much on this uh, dash route uh, damage stacking mechanism. So going over the passives again, really straightforward. We got the attack speed just so the build feels a bit smoother to play. You don't need to put these points. You could you could grab the 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 poison res or the dodge whatever you want uh, to because this will be glancing blow for you uh we're using a shield so no dual wielding nothing we get the mana gain and the health gain for sustain we grab the poison chance we grab the haste we grab the damage reduction all the glancing blow and all the health again keep in mind if an enemy hits us not only do we have uh damage reduction right not only do we have glancing blow not only do we have bastion we're also gonna be getting healed per glancing blow and per block so in order for us to even take damage, the hit needs to be bigger than 70, you know? And with this amount of damage reduction that we have, we actually, I mean, they're basically healing us and giving us damage when, when trash mobs hit us. Even at high waves, like, I mean, uh, I proved when I did my push. And then on Blade Dancer, uh, there's different ways you can do. Some, some of the things are, are priority. The main thing is you want to grab all the dash route stuff. You want to grab the movement speed. Uh, and then you want to grab an extra shadow just in case you want to grab this damage reduction and I like the leech rate just because we're going to be utilizing a bleeding heart and they this gives you crazy sustain basically because you leech from all your poisons uh, all of the other stuff like these points here I mean if you're not going to use puncture I mean you're probably not going to proc them so you can put them down here I might respec into a uh, perfection uh, set up once I get uh, better gear so I can fit armor into the build because right now as you can see I'm not rocking any armor at all but you could completely do it you know you could uh, take off flask put on sh uh, shurikens get an armor blessing and you could have all of this that I'm showing plus the armor this is the reason I don't have it on this character uh, it's basically because I've been playing blade dancer for four days uh, so yeah but I'm gonna keep playing this character make it as more as ridiculous as possible basically and let's just say in a month or so I'll do like an update so you guys see how ridiculous it can get 
For the skills, again, I'm using Puncture. I'm using the, the Frenzy because you keep it so you can cast your Umbral Blades faster. Uh, we got all the Bleed Chance. You could get an extra, an extra stack here if you wanted. I go for the Shadow Daggers. You don't really need them. But when the Shadow Daggers proc, they actually apply your Bleed Chance and your Poison Chance. So it's another source of uh, applying your ailments. So that's the only reason I have it. I'm probably going to respect this eventually, where I just, when my gear gets so good in terms of damage, because I don't have exalted damage or anything like that, uh, I would probably spec out of this, get this extra, and then probably max my friends here, put the cannons of that. We will see, it's optional. Again, um, uh, uh, shift is very flexible. The main thing you want, again, I'm going for the shadow daggers, you could go for the shurikens. But again, the main thing you want is you want their vulnerability, and everything else you can do pretty much whatever you want. The movement speed, you know, the extra shadow. If you're using flask, use the flask. If you're using shurikens, use the shurikens. Again, it's Blade Dancer. Even a five-year-old can come up with a tree for this ability, so we don't have to spend too much time talking about it. And here comes the Umbro Blitz tree. The Umbro Blitz tree has uh, very dif different uh, versions. This is the one I'm using, which is kind of like a more kite version. Again, the tournament required me to use Puncture, so I was trying to make Puncture a core feature of my build. So again, I'm, for the most part with this build, I am Puncturing. And then I leave the Umbral Blades on the floor, like this. And then when they run out, you know, I recall them or whatever, and then I repeat the combo, right? And then I keep all my buffs with Umbral Blades. I use Umbral Blades to apply Frailty and other ailments, etc., right? But again, you don't need to use uh, uh, Puncture, and if you don't do that, you could go for the Explosion Note. This is way more damage, but it's way less... Uh, it's a bit more uh, micromanagement intensive. Uh, it's not gonna be as comfortable and just like leaving your blade blades there and just everything dies You're gonna ha you're gonna have to basically be spamming them You're probably gonna ha have to add sync strike into, build into the build to get more shadows because this node will make it so you get way more damage with this and this But uh, it will it, it will be a slightly different build You would basically change your puncture for sync strike make sure you have the shadows and make sure that the shadows uh, You know will create blades and the blades explode so you would basically take the points out of here and you would put them here if you wanted to play that and you wouldn't need this anymore because this takes away the this takes away the the return so you don't need to do this so you would put these points whatever you want really uh, the core thing we want the umbral uh, the dash routes chance on on use and we want the damage per dash route again as i showed you in the clip in this video you can get 100 200 if there's enough enemies on the screen and they're tanky enough and they don't just instantly die it gets really close. I, I mean, you can literally, like, it, it looks like you don't have damage, you get hit a bit, and then suddenly everything fucking explodes. And again, you know, benefits of this build, your full tank, and you, uh, I mean, 4k life, Blade Dancer pushing 500 waves in three days. Uh, enough said, you know. This is probably one of the strongest builds I, build, I, I brought into this channel. I think Blade Dancer is just overpowered as fuck, but again, I just wanted to show my version. And I wanted to showcase things that, funny enough, I have never seen anyone do, like getting hit in purpose to get infinite damage on Blade Dancer. But uh, here it is. Uh, again, uh, we're using um, Acid Flask mainly to get this poison chance and also to get the, uh, the toxins that make enemies take extra damage. This is an extra source of damage multiplication for us. Again, you don't really need this. I also have this, cause since I'm getting hit intentionally, I have this. So Acid Flask drops from time to time just to keep up the buff a bit easier. But again, you could go Shurikens, you could go Sync Strike, it doesn't really matter. You could go Decoy. This is optional. I went for the Global Poison Chance just because being a shield build, we don't get to utilize the Dual Wield Dagger nodes on the Blade Dancer tree. And then Smoke Bomb, again, really straightforward. You want the Shadows so they make more Blades. You want the Dash Routes. And then everything else is optional. I get the cri the, cri uh, the, cri the Crimson Shroud for the bleed that gets converted to poison with my Umbral Blade tree, the duration, the, the stack of slow just for a bit of extra safety and kiting, and a bit of area just so, you know, I have a bit of better area when I'm bossing or whatever. You could also go for the, for the Silver Shroud if you want it. Um, but again, uh, I would only do that if you're playing the Dodge version. Uh, going back to the passives, now that we talk about Silver Shrouds, you can see that I have these 10 points here. Uh, the Silver Shrouds will proc and give you a thousand worth, but it you won't dodge, right? So you still get the worth benefit when you uh, drop below 70% health, but uh, but you don't get to dodge. But it's still really good, you know, you have 4000 HP, 
you go to 3000 and suddenly boom a burst of a hundred to a thousand worth this build is so fucking ridiculous it's so tanky it's one of the tankiest builds i ever built uh and I showcased, again, we were literally playing 500 waves and I was face tanking everything. You can dash in and as long as you're in Bastion range, nothing can kill you. Uh, and again, the damage is just ridiculous. Let's go back into the gear really quick. I'm going to show uh, kind of like a basic uh, gear uh, thing. Again, I have a bit better gear in some sections, right? For example, I have a tier 6 of this. My gloves are exalted. Uh, my, my, I have a tier 3. But you don't need that to play the build, so I'm just gonna showcase it uh, the way I think it's just like good enough. The most important thing you gotta do, you gotta learn what your bases are, okay? So a lot of people say, oh my god, uh, Paladin gets so much free resistances, so does Playdancer, you just gotta build properly. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing for my resistances. As you can see on, my, on this gear, on this planner, no resistance, on, on crafted, right, on, on affixes. No resistance, no resistance, no resistance, no resistance. Well, just physical, no resistance, no resistance, no resistance. So we basically, we have a full set of gear and we use one resistance affix on all of our gear. This is why we have 4,900 health on the planner. Obviously, my character is not as good as this. That's why it's a bit, it's only 4,000. But, and again, imagine if you get Ravenous Void, etc. You're gonna, be, or if you get exalted HPs or whatever, yeah, just imagine your your HP is exalted. You know, uh, the, the the HPs are gonna get you. You can get six thousand life on this character and still do the same amount of damage. Okay, but again, make sure where are we gonna get our resistances from? Again, uh, poison resistance we're gonna get from uh, our helmet and our relic implicit. Really good relic because it also give us a leech rate uh, with for bleeding heart. Or necrotic resistances we're gonna get for both ivory rings free necrotic resistance void resistance from the blessing you have to farm this and again get a 70 percent or something and then just put a small idol for it physical resistance we have one crafted uh, uh suffix that we have on relic you could uh, i like it on relic but you could have it anywhere if you uh, if you can't uh, get it anywhere else the reason you want to get it on on relic and not rings for example is because rings uh, uh can fit crit avoidance and you want to get health crit avoidance on rings and uh, you don't want to be using resistances on slots that can have hp right if you got resistance on your helmet it means you're gonna be losing a slot of hp whether if you get it on the relic you don't lose anything anywhere else as you can see i have double hp everywhere but here any you can only get one source of hp and that's why physical resistance goes on the relic and nowhere else yeah, and lightning resistance from the blessing, pretty much, plus a, a bit, a bit of health from idols, and then from the cold and the rest, you can either do cold or rest boots. But basically, the rest of the resistances, you just try to get idols that come with HP and resistance. All right, so you can say I have elemental resistance and in increased HP elemental resistance, increased HP cold resistance or fire resistance, whatever you need. You can see here, I have a bit of extra HP uh, idols. If your idols are not perfect, like mine, right? You're most likely gonna be running 3% HP with 15% cold rest or 4% HP with 8% cold rest. And this is why, obviously, the weaker your idols are, the lower this number is gonna be. Uh, and that's why, again, my character doesn't have quite as much as the planner. But again, and just free elemental resistances. We don't need idols for damage whatsoever. And uh, this is one of the reasons why you get so much HP because we are getting the damage from the Umbral Blade mechanic we actually do not need anything else for damage. Again, the most important affixes, I would say, try to get rings with exalted crit chance, uh, because if you get two exalted crit chance rings, like this ones, uh, which I, ha I had a ring basically like this, and I just clone it with Rune of Ascendance, you can do that, literally do mirror rings. You can see my rings are basically mirrored. I have this ring, crit avoidance, and then I have this ring, which is crit avoidance. I basically just use... Uh, the rune of the rune that clones right this one and that's how I got my ring just get one and then clone it and uh, You're good to go and make sure that you have at least one of the rings if you don't get to clone it with the minus throwing physical uh, mi Minus throwing mana just so umbral blades is free to cast and you don't have to you know Micromanage your mana too much. It's not necessary. It's not super important But it will give mo you more flexibility in order to spec your umbral blades however you decide it Again, um, other stuff that you want for the build, 
it tried to get uh tried to get uh dash routes uh dash routes uh dash routes when hit uh exalted if you can i have a tier six uh but again if you if you manage to get this to the higher tier you get on on this affix the better you know it goes up to 80 percent and again thanks to the the other sources of dash rod gain that you have right uh we can see on the passives that right here you have uh Chance to get dash rods, you have 30 and you have another 35 here. This planner is slightly different, don't worry, it'll be updated for the for the build guide. For the build guide, that's why I showed you the one in-game. But again, we have 35, uh, uh, 35 chance here, plus another 30 here, plus another, you know, uh, whatever it is here, uh, 40 here. So basically you get a 100% chance just by getting this tier 5 or tier 6, ideally, right? Uh, other, uh, other considerations... Uh, Viper Tail, if you get a 3, 2 LP, I had a 2 LP on mine, it didn't roll what I wanted, my, my, my Viper Tail is not as good, it just has 1 hybrid health and physical damage, which is kind of useless, but again, you could have this with 3 LP, and it would be even fucking better, and again, try to get the cleanse, you know, because cleanse is really important in the current meta with certain enemies that just like, one-shot you with uh, dots, like zealots, etc, you know, and then Bleeding Heart, Super important in the build, even if you don't have any LP on it, uh, try to get it uh, because the sustain is just incredible from poisons. This item is absolutely broken. It's probably one of the strongest items in the game. And I think it should completely get nerfed because it it allows you to create abominations like the one I'm showing you today. Uh, again, uh, Bastion of Honor, super strong, super powerful, uh, not much to say about it. And, uh, you know, you want to get the block blessing, you want to get your endurance. Again, if you get an exalted item with endurance, uh, that makes it so you don't need the endurance anymore. You could go for the flat armor. This would be better than min max for endgame if you went for uh, for the armor uh, blessing. And, you know, you could spec into shurikens to maximize your armor. You could try to maybe fit in a throne of ambition. You could try to fit in a ravenous void, etc. But you don't need that for the build to run. I run it without Ravenous Void. I do have Ravenous Void, but I don't think you need it, so I'm not including it on the planner. But you could definitely run uh, Ravenous Void with this with this build. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, since I've been talking a lot, right? I'm actually just gonna go into Arena and show you uh, how tankily this shit actually gets. And instead of going into some like low arenas or whatever, I'm just gonna go in with a memory key with the infinite and you guys see what I'm talking about and how ridiculous this is. We're probably gonna be around 250 waves right now and I just want you guys to see how tanky this gets. And then I'll, I'll finish the build guide. So again we're at wave 260 which is a really really high wave and again you can see that we are basically just standing still getting hit by everything. You know we have a zealot there which is the enemy that I mentioned that can actually fuck us. You can see if these guys hit us, they hit it for like 50, so they're actually healing us, right? You can see what I mean, look at the dash route stacking, right? We, we literally don't take damage, we draw a single dash route, and we're healed to full HP. We, we legit don't give a shit, basically. We, we don't give a shit. We're super tank, I'm literally standing still, getting, touch getting touched by everything intentionally. This is super hard content, you know? And again, we, we literally, we're getting blasted by Ember Mages, we don't care. Again, we can get hit by more things. And you can see that we, we just don't really care. I, I'm, I'm kind of standing still, you don't need to, to kite, you're just fine. And again, it looks like, oh, but Lizard, your HP is moving. Yeah, but you gotta, oh, got, also gotta realize how Blade Dancer works. Because when my HP reaches Endurance, look at how tanky I get in this stage. Right? Because of all my uh, damage reductions had low HP uh, procs. And I only have 40%, uh, 50% endurance here. I could have 60, right? And, I ha and again, imagine this with armor. <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know? Like, uh, I wasn't even trying here, and you're just like... Ink so tanky. For, for consideration, 260 waves is the equivalent of like, I don't know, like 600 corruption or something like that. Um... Uh, and again, keep in mind, I was literally getting hit in purpose. I wasn't using decoy. I wasn't using shift. I wasn't using dash route. I was literally just standing still and proccing umbra blades from time to time. I will do a proper five waves now, so you see how it actually plays. Um, if you had to play it properly, right?
you can see we we keep our our, uh, our stacks up and again if you actually actively play you can see you keep you keep getting procs of dash rods we have 20 now we and again you kind of like you want to have an eye right you want to keep keep an eye on when you cast your dash rods because you want to you want to make sure that you recast them whenever you have a lot of stacks because the stacks like for example right now we have 18 right now we cast and you can see each like they're taking for so much without the, just one of them without even trying you know and again we're really mobile we got haze we got frenzy uh, and it's kind of like it's it's kind of like ridiculous how tanky we are and you know bleeding heart gives us a lot of sustain so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Uh, I thought it was pretty original. I've never seen anyone build a Blade Dancer like this. Just going full HP and just make abusing every fucking mechanic this class has. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know it's a class that it's a bit longer than usual, but it's a class that I never played. So I feel like I had to extra explain some stuff. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and have fun. Bye.